G'day guys and welcome back to the next part of my Flashprint tutorial series. Now we have been working on the expert settings for slicing and this one today is probably a bit of a loaded topic for me because if you've been watching up till now you might have heard me say that I don't personally use a raft so I haven't found well, a need for it yet but they do they do have a purpose so what a raft is, a ra the raft setting, it adds a bed beneath the model. It's a few layers deep and it extends beyond the, you know, the edges of the model. The whole purpose of it is it can help prevent adhesion issues, it can help prevent warping if you, you know, you're running, um, say, a higher temperature uh, print bed. Uh, and warping is caused by inconsistent cooling, so basically your upper layers cool faster than your bottom layers and cause it to contract, and that's what you know, that's what it does. So basically that provides an insulating layer. It's also really, really good if you've got a, a fairly warped uh, build plate. Again, it you know, makes up for that. So there is, there is a purpose for it, but the downside is it does use more filament, it takes more time to print, and it can also give you a bit of a, a messy bottom layer, potentially. Uh, so potentially it'll be the right you know right thing to use as I said I, I, don't, I don't use it I haven't needed it so you know lucky me I guess but if you do need it let's go through it all the same so the first option is to enable or disable which is pretty straightforward it's yes or no so for the purpose of this we're just going to assume it's yes uh, the next one is margin so margin is how far beyond the edges of the model the raft is going to get printed. So if we increase this setting, first off I'll actually uh, close the slicer, go into the preview because I had it set on 5mm. You can see that the purple part of our slice preview is actually our raft and if I haven't mentioned it on the left hand side here you can actually see what the different colours mean in relation to uh, yeah the model and printing. So purple, raft. Back into slicing and let's increase it for a bit of a demonstration right up to 10 mil which is actually the max which is a that's a massive raft so that's 11 hours and 46 minutes at five millimeters and actually you know what it doesn't add any time for whatever reason but it has used a whole lot of uh about 10 grams more filament which you know that adds up over time and yeah so you can see that it's you know made it slightly bigger Again, 10 mil back down to 5. Yep, so for whatever reason, that's only taken nope, 6, six grams and 10 minutes more, apparently. So there you go, not a huge drama for this printer at least. Anyway, the next setting is space to model Z axis. Now, if you've watched the previous video on supports, you'll probably understand what this particular um, setting does. It is the vertical distance between the top of the support and the bottom of the model. So a lower distance is obviously going to help um, ensure that the model is supported, and this is this is a form of support, I guess, but at the cost of uh, removability. So when you've got a tighter figure here, it's going to adhere better to the actual raft, which potentially is going to you know make a mess of that bottom layer, as I mentioned before. The next settings can assist with that as well. So we've got the above raft extrusion ratio. So what that is, it's the uh, extrusion ratio for the first layer of the model. So I don't think we've looked into exactly what that is right now. Because um, I think that's actually in, I believe it's in advanced. Sorry to jump around, but yeah, extrusion ratio is something we actually haven't looked at yet. So um, basically, what that is, it's re referring to the amount of uh, filament being pushed out. Um, so if you think of 100% as standard, 90% is obviously a bit less than standard, so we're actually running it a little bit thinned. And the point of that is, basically a higher ratio is going to make it harder to remove, but provide a better first layer. So we're sort of going, okay, let's make our first layer a little less consistent, but make it easier to remove. The next bit is our above raft maximum speed. So that is like your first layer speed when you're just printing straight onto the uh, onto the bed. Sorry. A slower speed is going to help lay that filament down nice and neat and help provide a you know a good um, a good starting point for the rest of the model. So again, that's set lower than your than your standard print speed. The next settings are for our bottom layer. 
So the first one is layer height, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, but what's it mean for, for us? Well, a higher layer height can help with adhesion on imperfect build plates. So assuming that we're using this raft because we've got a warped build plate, a bigger figure here, it's going to basically just let, you know, let the filament drop down onto it and go where it needs to. Uh, and it can also provide insulation if you're running a hotter bed, so you know a bigger figure here will help later on. The next setting is path width, so that refers to basically the stream of filament being extruded. It'll attempt to push out, you know, a 1.4 millimeter wide stream of filament on this setting. I mean, obviously there can be inconsistencies here based on you know level of squish, bed level, etc. If you put a set of cowpaws on it, you might find that it's not exactly 1.4 millimeters, but that's basically what it's trying to get to. Um, so it's you know really pushing out a lot out of a 1. Point, uh, out of a 0.4 nozzle, which is what this print is sent on to. Um, the the wider path helps with adhesion, but does require slow a slower build speed. Or sorry, a slower print speed. That's what I meant to say. Moving on, the next step is fill density. So this is like your infill percentage. Actually, it isn't like your infill percentage. It is the infill percentage for the first layer of the raft. So like a raft is a compromise between stability and removability. So higher percentage will increase adhesion and strength, but it will make it harder to remove later on potentially. Now that's another subject which is can be looked into completely, which is, you know, adhesion and removability later and you know different methods that people use glue sticks build tape hairspray etc so potentially if you are having trouble with removability one of these other options might also be worth looking into at the same time um, and obviously keep in mind we don't need it to look pretty it is a functional um, whatever you call it it's a functional structure this so it's probably going to get chucked away or recycled if you have the means and you know in the end so finding a fill density that works for you is perfect the next bit is the speed. So this is in relation to our path width. We need a nice slow speed to get that 1.4 millimeters. So it is running at 8 millimeters per second, which is pretty slow. This is the standard setting for, for this, so nothing's been fiddled. Um, if you reduce the path width, you could definitely bump that speed up a bit as well. And keep in mind, you know, this is the tried, I say tried and true method from FlashForge. So hopefully there's been a lot of uh, R&D or whatever you want to call it into into these settings. If you do change them, you will have to obviously do your own research and testing to figure out what works for you. The next settings, I'm not going to go through individually because it's very similar. We've got layer height, path width, fill density and speed. And you can notice that the, uh, the layer height for the middle is the same as the bottom. The path width is dropped down to what is our standard path width, which I believe would have been in... Uh, it would have been in one of the other spots, maybe shells. Sorry to jump around like this, guys. I do, do apologise, but there is a setting that I have lost for my path width. But yeah, it exists. Um, but that's, you know, that's our nozzle. So our nozzle is 0.4. That's basically our standard path width. Uh, our fill density has also decreased slightly because we just don't need it as much. It's basically just filling a space. We don't want to waste too much filament. Uh, and speed's obviously increased as well. The other thing is layers. So you can increase the height of your raft here as you see fit. But the middle layer is a sort of, it's a transition layer. It's basically, an, you know, a, a, a bridge between the bottom and the top layers. The bottom serves a purpose and the top serves a purpose. So the top layer is running, or top layers because we're running three of them is running a lower layer height, standard path width, and higher print speed, which is, excuse me, that's our, our standard print speed. So what's the point of all this? Especially the layers first on the, um, on the top layers? Well, the idea behind that is it helps when there's higher temperatures. Sorry, get off that so you don't look at that tooltip. It helps when there's higher temperatures, so basically the top layer provides your best insulation. So if you were, say, printing ABS, which is, uh, I think they can run at like 100, I think they can run at like 120 degrees on the on the build plate, which is quite hot. It provides better insulation between, obviously, the build plate and the model, which can help prevent warping. So if you were running a hot build plate, you could increase this further. So that's that layer setting right there. The only other setting on on the raft page on the raft interface is the angle between the model which is basically that is the uh 
the path direction between the top layer of the raft and the bottom layer of the model. There's no tooltip here, so unfortunately you're going to have to suffer my thoughts on why this matters, um, which is fairly basic. It's, you know, like opposing directions helps prevent the raft and model getting too friendly, too sticky together, and it's just, you know, being near impossible to remove. So by having those opposing directions, I believe it just helps with actually removing it. And that is that is basically it. As, I, as I've said now a few times, I haven't had to use a raft, but if you are having issues with adhesion or, you know, leveling is getting a bit annoying, you know, you can get it as good as possible and then use a raft to get you the rest of the way. You may have to fiddle with some of these settings to work it out, but the information at least given today should be enough that you will be able to, you know, muddle through it and get it to where you need to. As I said in the previous video and hopefully a few others, you know, fiddle around, test them if you need to, test them with a cheap roll of filament to find, you know, a structure setting that works perfectly for you and it'll make life a whole lot easier. So again, thank you for watching and continuing on with this, uh, this tutorial series and we'll move on to additions and potentially even cooling in the next video depending upon how long it is. Thanks for watching, until next time.